Hi guys, this is Simon from AV3 Software. Here's a quick tutorial to get you started with Trapco Particular, showing you how to make this simple yet cool looking logo opener effect. So let's get started. So once you're in After Effects, click New Composition, and let's call this Main. I've got mine set to 960 by 540, 24 frames per second, and a 5 second duration, but you can do what you want here. Now first we need to create a background layer, so go to New, Solid, and let's just call this BG. And you can do what you want here, but I'm going to use an effect. I'm going to go to Generate, Ramp. I'm going to change the ramp shape to Radial, and I'm going to bring these two colors down to a dark gray going into an even darker gray. And I just quickly adjust these little circle things here. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now we need to bring in our logo. So go back to Project, right click, Import, File, find your picture or logo, or maybe you want to create a text layer, doesn't really matter. Put it above the background layer, and now let's scale it down. For me, I'm going to do 25%, but it could be different for you. So first thing we need to do is right click on this logo and hit pre-compose and call this logo. Now we need to do the same thing again, right click on logo and hit pre-compose and call this effect. So once you've done that, let's double click on effects and zoom out a little bit. And now we need to create a mask. So with logo selected, use the rectangle or pen tool and create a thin rectangle next to just outside the actual, you know, the frame. And now we need to keyframe this so let's bring down the mask options so we've, make sure you're at zero hit the keyframe button here move forward to where you want the animation to end which for me would be about two seconds and now let's just drag this along holding down shift to keep it straight okay and we also want to add some feathering to this mask so i'm going to do 120 pixels here so back into our main composition let's right click new solid and let's call this particles Okay, now we need to go to Effect, Trap Code, and Particular. And before we start playing about the settings, let's change this effect layer to a 3D layer by clicking this box here. Okay, once you've done that, let's go to Emitter, change the Emitter Type to Layer, change the Layer Emitter to the Effect Layer, and change Still to Particle Above. Now it's really just a case of playing about the settings until you get the look that you want. And there's no like hard and fast rule, just experiment as much as you can. For this demonstration, I'm going to go to 700,000 particles per second. And I'm going to make the direction directional. Bring up the velocity to 750. And I think that's this that for this. Let's go to particle. Let's change the life to 1.2 seconds. I'm going to change the type to cloud it, cloudlet. I'm going to bring the size right down to 1.3. I'm going to add some randomness to it, 15%. Size over life. I want them to get gradually smaller as they get older, so I use a second graph there. I make the opacity randomness, I bring this up to 25%. And also opacity over life, do the same thing as size and bring this down like that. And I think that's about it actually. You can obviously play about more, but I'm just going to go ahead and render this out to show what it looks like. Okay, so this is what I've got so far. There's a couple more settings I want to actually change before I move on. Um, I also want to, I want to bring up the wind a little bit. So go to physics, air, and I just want it to be moving in the right direction a little bit. So I'm going to bring this up to about 35. 34, yeah, that's fine. And then there's one final setting I'd recommend, regardless of what other settings you're using, and that is motion blur. So go to rendering, motion blur, and change the motion blur here to on. Now I'd recommend only doing this after you've finished like, with everything else, because this drastically increases your rendering time. So there's one more thing we have to do, and that is make the logo appear before the animation starts, because at the moment, the animation is starting as soon as the logo appears, which isn't ideal. So let's go back into your project, find the logo that we originally pre-composed earlier, and drag this on top of the effects composition. Now we need to scale this down, so hit S, 
and bring it back to the, the value it was before, so 25 for me. Now we want the effect to start not straight away, so we need to move this along. I'm going to go for one second. Okay, now we need to create a mask to cover up the logo as the animation moves forward. So let's go into our effect again and click on mask path once. And then you go to edit, copy, go back to the main, and with logo selected, go to edit, paste. Okay, now let's bring down the options for the mask again. And we've got our two keyframes here, so let's move these along the first thing we should do. And we want it to start, the mask to start moving just a bit after when the effect starts, so there's no overlap. So about that distance is good. Okay, now we need to go to the last keyframe and effectively just drag these two points over to cover up. Oh wait, sorry, I forgot one thing. We need to click inverted first. So yeah, after you've clicked inverted, let's drag these two points across to cover up the whole logo. Like that, and then like this. Okay, so I'll render this out and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so this is what we have so far. As you can see, there's a slight sort of a wave effect going across the text as the animation starts. Um, so I've moved these frames a little bit further along than before. And we also want to add some feathering to this mask as well. So bring this up to around 80. And now I'll render this again and show you. Okay, that looks good to me. Um, so I'll just um, turn back on motion blur because I turned it off to make the rendering faster and I'll show you the final outcome. Okay, so here we have it. This is the final, final animation. As you can see, it's probably not perfect, but I made this in under six minutes, so I'm sure you can do a, a much better job than me. So I hope you found this tutorial useful and you found some new ways to use trap code in particular, especially if you're quite new to trap code this gives you a chance to play about the settings and have some fun.